YouTube. How about another fishing video with one wild crafter and the wooded beardsman? Just cracked my back out. Yeah. We, uh, this is day two of a trip. We are up in northern Ontario near Goganda, Ontario. Uh, and last night uh, we did a little bit of scouting and then we did a little bit of fishing. That video came out last week, catching up rainbow trout. And what we're up to today is uh, heading in on this logging road and then uh, off these main roads we get these kind of little school side jobs that have grown in a little bit. So what happens up here, <laughs> give me a second to do up my window, is that uh, the logging restrictions, they don't let you log or build a road within a kilometer of a trout lake usually. Um, so the access is pretty limited. And our whole strategy here is to... Um, nope, I'm going to get caught in the ropes there. Is to find the nearest point to a brook trout lake. We're using Fish Online, which is Ontario's uh, digital fish map. Tells you lake survey results, uh, stocking lists, uh, species. So we're getting to the closest access and then we're gonna have to walk in from there. But uh, we did scout this last night. We know where we're going. We know there's brook trout in this lake. It's not a stock lake. And we're going to do our best to catch some of them. Can you see the walking trail? There's not much here except for a couple pieces of flagging tape and a few cut stumps to give away the path down to the lake here. And my guess is that this is somebody's winter skidoo trail uh, just because it doesn't look like there's any actual foot traffic on here except for maybe a few animals. And there's the little path through the woods. The uh, winter fishing on these little lakes is a lot more effective and impactful than the uh, summer fishing. It's so much easier to get in in a skidoo as opposed to this kind of bushwhacking that you have to do carrying all your stuff in a canoe. Um, but it's nice if you can find one of these little access trails and you don't mind to carry your canoe. You can get into some cool little lakes. I definitely need to uh, get a new canoe for this kind of a thing. Mine is a beast to portage. Um, it's running around 80 pounds, I think, and uh, for whatever reason, mine's not a very deep canoe, so when you've got the yoke sitting on your shoulders, the top of the canoe actually touches your head. So you have to kind of lean a bit, you got to hunch while you're carrying it, and then what happens is it pinches your shoulders, at least it pinches my shoulders in a weird way, and kind of makes me want to vomit after I get about this far. This is how far I carried the canoe, and then I set it down, and I just dragged it. You can probably see it up ahead there, the red canoe. Down here the path is really obvious because the beavers have been coming up in here to cut food. Just coming up from the lake there. up getting ready to fish also getting ready to get wet I think we've probably been drifting for about 10 or 12 minutes and I think I've seen 30 or 40 trout jumping out oh, did you get that one I thought if I ran the camera we'd probably get one here they're kind of on both sides of the boat right out in the middle of the lake here Chris had a bite a few minutes ago These guys look pretty small, some of them looked a little bit bigger, but uh, hopefully they're interested in worms as well as whatever's on the surface. Caught a break from the rain, and 
We uh, hopped out for a little walk back here. This shoreline is all really, really sandy. Um, we're gonna do a little tour of the lake and see what that other shore is like where the steeper shoreline is. Spruce trees over there and birches and things over here, it's all jack pine. And there's a real nice access uh, over there in a camp spot, so later we might go for a little drive and see if we can find that easier access spot. We have canoed most of this lake and um, all the edges are really, really shallow. Actually, most of the lake is really shallow. And the only fish that we saw were the ones when it was raining this morning. And we're kind of sitting on that spot right now. We're just uh, trying a few different things with spoons and spinners, but there's uh, not much going on. The water is, it's like bathtub warm at the surface anyway. I don't know if it's any cooler further down. It must be a little bit, but uh, we're gonna switch gears, I think. You ready for lunch? Yep. Yep. I'm starving. I'm gonna see if my thermometer's in here. Check the temperature. I don't know if I brought it with me. Oh yeah. Oh, I did. Oh, cool. I think. Yep. Ta -da. Let's see what's up. Let's. Yeah, we'll get a temperature readout here in a second. We're thinking maybe because it's so warm to uh, try for rainbow trout again, and uh, maybe also try and hit some deep spots on the one lake nearby here that has lake trout. Twenty-five. 25 degrees? At the surface. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's no go for brook trout. No. No, that's warm. Yeah. And I'm still soaking wet. My boots are wet. It's probably just time to have a fire and uh, eat food and dry off. That's where we're at. We gotta Now we have to carry the canoe and everything back out of here. Because I don't think we'll come back here. I thought we might leave the canoe and then come back, but not feeling it. I have a really hard time drinking water when it's raining. I don't know why. Um, but I'm getting dehydrated even though I'm soaking wet. So to help me get more water in me, I'm going to add some electrolyte crystals. These ones came in um, one of the Nomadic subscription boxes. This one is lemonade flavor. Oh, it smells like lemonade. And then when it's effervescent. Fancy stuff. Ah, and it's like salty lemonade. That's good. Help me drink more water. This is getting Set up for some lunch here. Burgers, eh? We have to eat all of these. Yeah, we cook them all anyway. Yeah, true. Um, some beans and peas. Sure. <laughs> yeah, get all the food groups in there. <laughs> some adobo. Is that a food group now? Yep. Yeah. It's the uh, the sixth one on the rainbow. Yeah. All are right. We, are we doing a rainbow still or not? I don't know. <laughs> What's a rainbow? Is it a pyramid? Oh, the food. I don't even know. The food something. I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. The food umbrella? Yeah. Whatever yeah. falls underneath it you eat? Yeah. Are those gluten free buns? They are. They taste uh -huh. fine though, so. Okay. You don't have to worry about it. Oh, that's good. Better get our veggies into us. Alright, which one is it? Nope, nope, that one. Came down to uh, rinse my hands at the lake and it's kind of interesting, there's a bunch of um, dead pumpkin seeds here. That's a minnow. Dead pumpkin seed. There's a couple more just down the shore a bit. So I don't know what would have killed those guys. And there it is. Peas and carrots. Buttered burgers. 
with elbow space. We'll do this. That's all I need. How are my bug bites looking? Bad enough, I guess. Oh, there's a bug. Back on Rainbow Lake. Try for another rainbow. Spend the afternoon just kind of drifting with the breeze, paddle up the lake, drift with the breeze. And uh, see if they're active. See if we can catch a bunch like the one you caught yesterday. That'll be all right. Well, oh, look at this happy face. Check this out. There's the money. Right close to where Chris got one yesterday. That's my fish. Yeah, you were laughing at me. Why do you want to go to that spot yeah, again? Why don't we go to the other side of the lake? There are all the fish in that spot? Oh, well, hey. apparently. <laughs> That's a good two, three, four pounds. I'd say yeah. four, four and a half. Yeah. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah. We can go home now. Well, let's see if we can't get, well, one for, for dinner, one for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was on net, so I wasn't on camera, but this is just like three minutes later. Chris lands one. Boom! That's crazy. We yeah. hit the jackpot. Here. Yeah. We're going to have to build a smoker tonight. We will. Or just put them in the cooler and run home. <laughs> That's freaking amazing. Uh, now he knows he's hooked. Yeah. This one slept all the way in. Big fish. Jeez, man. For the size of this lake. Oh, yeah. There. What, what you see is what you get. This is like a bathtub. Alright. There's a beaver lodge. And on top of the beaver lodge are two painted turtles. You see that? That's kind of cool, eh? So we're drifting. Trying to find the new trout hole. Drifted the old one a couple times and nothing happened, but. It's gotta rest it. Yeah, yeah. It's rested now. Yeah. Had a little rest too. I um, left Chris here by himself and I went and made a coffee because I hadn't had a coffee all day and I think that's why I was getting a bit of a headache. I didn't really think about a coffee all day, but um, when I got a headache, that's what came to mind. So, feel a little bit better now. The breeze picked up, the bugs have died off a bit. Still biting me around the ears. I have so many bites all on the edge of my hairline here. It's crazy. Maybe that's what my headache's from. Bug toxins. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna keep on fishing. We're gonna smoke those two trout, so... I'm going to build a smoker, um, so I'm going to put in four stakes and then two long ones across that we can lay those wire racks on. And then we're going to use some found materials here too. And people have been camping and moose hunting here for a long time probably, so there's all kinds of junk that you can find in the woods. Isn't that like a ready-made smoker rack? Metal legs? Just lay the wire racks across the top? Chris said you guys wouldn't want to see that though, so we have to make one. Um, but I'm probably going to use these pieces of plywood to set up a wind block because it's pretty breezy right now. And uh, we don't want all of our smoke blowing away from the fish. So we can move a piece of plywood around the fire and just kind of block the wind so the smoke goes up into the fish. That's the plan anyway.
Now, I don't know if, um, if you would have seen my video fishing northern Quebec in the community of Namaska. Um, but I wanted to smoke these trout the way that uh, my friend Anderson smokes sturgeon up there, which is to get a black spruce, such as this one, um, peel it, and then burn this green wood. Uh, it burns for a long time and it makes a lot of smoke because it's green wood. And then that should smoke those fish nicely. Yep, I've seen the Zach Fowler video, so I'm all set. Just uh, don't hit my tent. I'm going to get a little close up because you can't see what's going on here, but we've got our marble catch, little target, slingshot master. Master? Apprentice. Ooh! Well, that's no good. Pow. Oh. I don't know where that one bounced to. Does it go in the can? No. Get the metal detector out later. Yeah. That's all right. We did like uh, 30 shots with that one bearing. That's fun. Ow! That's another grouse. We're gonna flip that fish in a minute. Got some potatoes boiling down here. Some hummus, wadobo, chips. Put our nice trout on a nice bed of ferns. It's gonna look pretty good. Might have to go back on. Just the spine? Half of this thing too should probably go back on somehow. Oh yeah, just cut it down the middle and... Uh, yeah, it should probably probably be flipped. Okay. It didn't quite cook there, where the spine was. Oh yeah. I don't know if this skin's gonna come out too easy. this well I don't know that's gonna hold together or not yeah might have to put it in the pan I think I got bit again. Is there a second bug bite behind my ear? Mm -hmm. Right in the hairline there? I feel like there's two. <laughs> there's Next time we'll be smarter about the bugs. Maybe we gotta go get some bug spray. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, it'll about. be okay when we're on the water, I think, but I don't know. We're gonna see what tomorrow brings. We got, uh, let's see if I can get us both in frame here. Oh yeah, my tired arm can do this for a little while, I guess. <laughs> uh, if it's windy, maybe brook trout. If it's not windy, then maybe lake trout. Maybe we'll just find an easy lake to fish. If tomorrow. we're lazy, there's an easy lake right <sighs> over there. And we know what comes out of it. Delicious spruce smoked rainbow trout with wadobo spice, carrots and potatoes. Supper of champions. Really? Yeah. Seriously, we're spoiled. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. It is good. Like, I don't know if you can say that canned carrots are spoiling, but... Out here they are. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, so it's uh, like 8.30. Somebody has got some crazy ideas about a night fish, so we'll see what happens. Mm. I don't know about that. We didn't nap today or anything. We just kind of have been swatting bugs and... Oh, there's another one. Um, surviving. <laughs> surviving, thriving. Yeah, so thriving. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this adventure is not over. There's a whole other day left. So hang in there. Hopefully more fish. Guaranteed more bug bites. Um, that's kind of where we're at. Good morning, YouTube. Just wanted to show you short sleeves. No bugs this morning. Well, at least relatively no bugs. There's maybe a couple. I didn't sleep that great. It's kind of early. Not quite as early as we planned to get up because I slept through my alarm, but early enough to have some fish breakfast. Boil up some water for a coffee. That'll be good. We, uh, that fire kept going all night, smoldering away. Black spruce, peeled. Um, this is my uh, instant coffee that I bring camping. Got a creamer already in it, sweetener already in it. I'm sure it's no good for me, but uh, it's fast. Pour that in there. Boiling water, give it a stir, away you go. Tents are coming down. It's just empty. I haven't pulled it apart yet. Skadoosh! Almost coffee time. This is just lake water, so I'm gonna make sure it boils for 10 minutes. I got some for coffee, and then uh, we're all out of drinking water, so I might try and cool some off and get it into a water bottle for later as well. And some overnight smoked fish for breakfast. Mmm. Very good. Oh yeah. Hey, did I uh, tell you guys I found this glove at a campsite one time? And I've been using it for like 10 years. It's the official fire glove. Kind of nice if I had a match set, I guess, but. Instant coffee. All right, let's get this morning started. Mm. Fishy spoon, that's all right, eh? I mostly use the fork for the fish. All right, rock and roll. We, uh, are just kind of packing up and having a coffee. We're also going to do a little bit of campsite to clean up because it looked uh, a little bit tidier than this when we got here. So maybe burn up some of these small branches or throw them in the bush. This found plywood. I'm going to put that back where I got it. Maybe we'll leave our rack here. I don't know. It's not really, I mean, people don't like it. They can just take it out of the way, but try and, uh, try and do a little bit of tidy up anyway. All tidied up and ready to fish. Picked up all those branches and got them all burnt, so that's good. It was pretty tidy when we got here. Like, aside from the legacy stuff that's lying around, old tables and things, um, you know, somebody took the time to whippersnip this out, and so I didn't want to be the guy who leaves a bunch of branches lying around. So that's all burnt up. 
anything that was good to burn we threw back in the pile here got the uh, gravity filter hey a chipmunk stay out of my gravity filter gravity filter is working so I finally figured out what was wrong with it um, there's a little spring inside of here so when you push the hose in it's supposed to oops, sorry a little spring inside of here when you push the hose it's supposed to push the spring up which allows the water to flow through and it just wasn't really making contact for some reason um, but it seems to be working now so we're making water and now we are hopefully going to catch rainbow trout finish packing up and try for Lakers big change in the weather from yesterday uh, temperature wise they're not calling for rain today last I checked which was probably two days ago when I had cell signal there's this uh, pretty solid cloud cover but I see blue sky peeking through in a few spots so it might clear up later but this is nice trout fishing weather cooled down overcast little breeze rippling up the surface what do we've got? We got bullfrogs and green frogs calling. Red squirrels. It was a cuckoo, you heard that earlier. Cuckoo, 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 cuckoo. <laughs> oh, in the clear cut there? Yeah. You don't hear those too often. The beaver that splashed us a couple times. Well, it didn't splash us, but slapped its tail a couple times. Painted turtle came by and poked its head up. But uh, no fish, no trout, <laughs> not yet. So we're gonna. Oh, oh, I thought I had a bite there. Yeah, that would have been exciting. That would have been good timing. I, I don't know. I think that was a bite. Yeah. Very very light though. Well, maybe I'll keep talking for thirty seconds here and see what happens. Um, we probably drifted three or four drifts. We paddled around one and a half times and we're trying to uh, just to drift right down the middle of the lake because Chris saw one jump out here and probably with the warm water they're probably down in the deep but then firing up to grab stuff in the shallows water temperature is 24 degrees Celsius air temperature 17 degrees Celsius so we'll see anything happens on this last drift and then we'll switch gears and uh, we'll head over to the Lake Trout Lake. I uh, bought some batteries and uh, brought a vintage fish finder so I think that'll be kind of key for Lake Trout fishing to know how deep we are and where there's shoals and things otherwise it's tricky to just fish blind for Lake Trout I think. Just a weed. Oh just a weed. So I'll break out that fish finder at the next lake. The drift through the middle is paying off. Yeah, gotta grab that net. Got a fish on. Finally, we were just about to give up. This was the last drift. Last drift. Can you chuck it up a little bit yeah. more? Do you want me net for you or you want Yeah, do you want a net? I'll net. I'll set my camera down when uh, that fish gets in. Oh, oh that's okay. Turn around here. Let's get a peek. Oh, it's a big one again. I'm gonna tire him out. Gary's gonna be nut man. There, we'll get you over here. Getting in close. Hey, okay, nut time. Oh, oh. <laughs> stringer him? Crudely stringer him here. Just to get him out of the boat. He doesn't make more fish slime. Oh, there we go. One, eh? Nice one. Yeah. They're all that size. Should we bleed them out? Yeah. Full of sunfish and then other little bait fish, but this one's a stickleback, I think. Yeah, it could be. Here's one. 
A stickleback or something else? Something else. Yeah, it could be a stickleback. But lots of these little two inch sunfish. It's been pretty productive on this little lake so far. We've got uh, four, missed a couple bites uh, over one evening, another evening, and then this morning. That's not too bad. Real easy lake to fish too. Pile around pretty quick and find out where they are. So that's working out. And the plan is to get back out there in the middle and just try and drift those worms deep again and see if we can pick up another fish or two off that same spot. A little bit of misty rain out here. It's not bad though. Hopefully it doesn't rain any harder. Trying another drift. We're thinking of switching it up for lake trout soon. Let's go laker fishing. Check out this vintage fish finder from the 80s, I think, or maybe the 90s. Anyway, let's get it loaded up. Look at the batteries that it takes. Does anybody even use those anymore? Okay, how do these even go in here? Positive. Negative. Positive. Negative. We should. We should be in business here. What have I done? Caught on the grass, that's what we've done. <gasps> it works! Let's take it out. Let's figure out our depth. Let's catch a lake trout. I'm gonna try this sting eye spinner. Came out of uh, a mystery tackle box. Chris brought some mystery tackle boxes with him. There's a sponsor on his video. He's got a discount code. If you go check out his video, you'll find that. And the plan is to uh, troll for brook trout until we find the deep water. And then we're gonna try maybe get some jigs down real deep um, and haul up some lake trout. So if we get, what were you saying? A brook trout and a lake trout, we'll have a trout trifecta. Trout slam. Trout slam. Trout slam. Trout slam. Five feet of water it came up to 30 and then between like 30 feet and 45 feet there were tons of bait fish hopefully they look like these guys these four inch exo swims that's what I've got on here with a white jig head there's like lots of bait being marked down there that's just full of shit. 40 feet deep. They just tell the fishermen what they want to hear. Yeah. It's just got an algorithm and it shows you so many fish every yeah, few minutes. Lies. All right. There's a fish. There's a fish. Every uh, once in a while. I don't think they were that sneaky back when these were invented. No, they weren't that smart. <laughs> My fish finder finds fish. It's hard fighting the wind 
and I think we were drifting too fast to get our uh, jigs down to bottom but in this little bay we canoed all the edge and uh, tried for brook trout but it's super super clear so we figure we're probably spooking them long before we get close enough to catch them but in the middle here it's 40 feet deep and there's negligible wind so try our luck jigging here for bigger trout and lakers looks like uh, lots of bait fish down there anyway so that's a good sign it's getting a bit chilly out eh? it's cooling off yeah there's definitely different weather moving in just these gray clouds everywhere you look The wind seems to have died down a little bit though, so we're back out in the bigger part of the lake. Drifting out here. I don't know how deep down we're going to be able to get, but we're in 75 feet of water right now. Lots of good lake trout habitat here. So we're just going to keep on fishing. Came into this little back bay to get out of the wind. And the water is super clear. See the weeds down there and everything. And then there's a couple of spots that are kind of scraped clean. The little spots over there that look like uh, little fish nests. We haven't seen any brook trout yet, but uh, there are definitely some pumpkin seed sunfish in here and some other bait fish. I think anytime you're uh, fishing lake trout out of a canoe, you're under a challenging condition. And today was no exception, especially with the wind kind of blowing us around on the lake. Made our drifts a little bit faster than, you know, that would allow us to get our baits down deep where we wanted them, but we gave it our best try. Um, but we're calling it a day. We're back at the boat launch, just on the edge here. And we're gonna pack up and we've got a long trip ahead of us, but we'll be reminiscing about the successes of this trip, exploring new lands, camping out on crown land or public land, um, catching some really nice rainbow trout, checking out those um, brook trout lakes. Off camera, we did a bit of driving and scouted out some other zones too. So um, <clears throat> there's a few possibilities for the future there. And um, that's what we'll be doing for our four hour drive back is making more plans for future adventures. So I hope to see you on them. And I'll catch you then.